Okay, so our installation is complete and this is the desktop that you'll see when you log into your Ubuntu 20.04. Now, I won't spend too much time on the desktop environment. I'll just basically do an overview of how to actually use the Linux desktop. And then we'll dive into the terminal, which is where all the magic happens when it comes to the Linux operating system. So let's start off by uh, giving you guys a overview of how the desktop works and how to use it. And if you're coming from Windows or Mac OS, then this shouldn't be too difficult for you to pick up on. As you can see, it has a main bar at the top, which has all your tasks and hardware, hardware changes. Like for instance, uh, the sound settings right here. Right here is the logout button or shutdown button. So you can click there and that'll bring that up and you can shut down the system. You can also modify your internet connection. You know, the simple things that you would see in a Windows taskbar or the taskbar on a Mac OS system. And then right here in the center, you'll see you have the date and time. And if you click on it, there is a calendar. And then also you'll receive notifications here, which is super cool to see. Now, if we go over here to the left on this actual taskbar, you'll see where it says activities. You can click there and that'll actually open up any processes that are going on on the system or applications that may be running and minimized on the system. Like currently, I'm running some updates on this installation and I'll get into that later, how to actually do updates on the system using the graphical user interface. And if we click on that, that'll hide it back where it was. And as you can see on the desktop, you have folders. So this is the home directory, which is what they call it on a Linux system, the home directory. This is where all your files and folders are stored. And I want to cover this so you guys can at least see that the files that we are going to create and manipulate using the terminal once we get to that point can be modified using the GUI as well. And it looks different, you know what I'm saying? It's different from your Windows operating system as well as the Mac OS operating system. It's different, but the concept is pretty much the same. Uh, you can double click on folders and they'll open them up. You, they, are have, they have a back button so you can go back and you can navigate throughout the file system as needed. Now, let me go down and close this because I want to show you guys they do have a trash can. So if you delete something, it'll throw it in the trash can. And that opened up our file explorer again, which is another way to actually get to it. So let's go down and close that again. By default, you have a lot of software installed, especially on this version of Ubuntu. When we went through the install, it installed pretty much the default software that anyone would need or what they think anyone will need to use the operating system to its full potential. And just to cover some of it, if we go on the left hand side, you'll see this taskbar on the left hand side. This shows you your favorite software that's on there. And as you can see, we have Firefox. So our web browser, uh, Thunderbird is a mail client similar to Microsoft Outlook. You also, that's the same file explorer. Like when we click on Josh, that'll open up the file explorer and I'll open it up again, just so you guys can see. This is a music player. And like I said, I won't go through all this software. I just kind of want to show you what's there by default so you can understand that pretty much everything on this system is installed to make the transition from one of these other operating systems a whole lot easier. And like I stated, this is a music player. Then we have uh, this is similar to Microsoft Word. Now, one thing I want to show you guys was the software center. So I'll go down and open that up. But this is how you get other software. And just so you guys can get a full understanding, Linux doesn't have the typical software that you would install on a Windows operating system or Mac OS. It has its own repositories or locations where certain free and open source software is located so you can install it and use it on the operating system. And a lot of these applications 
are made to be a one com one to one comparison with software that you would see on other operating systems. Like earlier, what I was talking about, this is equivalent to Microsoft Word. Well, you can actually write documents just like Microsoft Word. You can even store the files in the Microsoft Word format. So you can jump back and forth with a particular file and you can easily modify it on your Windows system if you want to. So I just kind of wanted to cover that, but as you can see, this is the software. You can look at the Explorer. They have the editor's pick, so you can go through and play around and install some of the software. Uh, there are different categories, so you can go through and look at all this different software. And then also you can check out what's actually installed on the system. And this right here is makes it very simple for new users to Linux to actually transition over because it's not that difficult to install because once you find something under the explorer list let's say you want to install signal or gimp all you have to do is open up the actual application or click on it and then there's the install button and it'll install it on your system so let's go back and i just wanted to show you guys this is where you update your system as well but i'll show you the proper linux way of updating things once we get to the command line portion, but I at least wanted you guys to see it here, but this is where you can update all your applications that are installed on the system. Now let's go down and close that because I want to show you guys, they do have a help guide. So if you need help with while using this operating system, that will open up the how to guide basically goes through the overview of using the system. And I really wanted to show you guys this because I know a lot of people that are taking this course or new to the Linux operating system. This is a great place to get help. And that's why I use Ubuntu because the community, all the documentation and pretty much everything is, is out there for you to use so you can fully understand how to use the desktop environment as well as Linux in general. Now let's go ahead and close that. But like I said, this is the software updater that actually popped up and it's telling me to restart now, but I'm not going to restart at the moment. Let's minimize this because I want to show you guys a few other things. And right here, this is basically the installation ISO. I kind of left it on this system, but most of the time you want to remove it or you want to remove it from the actual system. If you're doing a physical install, if you did it on a, using a USB drive or a CD drive, you want to remove that CD or remove the USB drive from the computer. That way you you can verify that it's booting from the hard drive, especially if you made changes within the BIOS as far as the boot order. So it won't keep looping and going back into the installer versus booting from the hard drive. Now, I wanted to show you guys how to actually get to all the software that's installed on the system. As you can see, this is just basically what's open as well as the favorited software. But if you click here under show applications, it'll pop up with a screen and this looks fairly similar to people that use Android phones. You know how you swipe up and that'll bring up all your applications. That's ex exactly what this looks like. But this is for a full blown system and not a phone. But you can access all your software from here. Uh, I won't go through them all. I just kind of wanted to show you that's how you actually get to it if you need to use any of the software on the system. And one area I wanted to show you guys before we move on to the next section is the settings. Now, this is where you want to go if you need to make changes to this system in general. Pretty much all your settings are in this one location. Uh, like you have your network settings, Bluetooth settings. If you have a Bluetooth, Bluetooth hardware on your system, uh, the background, you can change the appearance, notifications, uh, applications. You can set your default applications in here, uh, privacy settings. So you're not being tracked by any type of software or the operating system itself. You can also log into online accounts if you want to. For instance, they have a way to connect to your Google account. That way your email and all that stuff will be connected directly to your Google account, which is which is very beneficial. And then also sharing, 
You can set up like share drives. They also have sound, power settings, display settings. And like I said, any type of settings that you could think of or under here. Uh, if you have a printer at home that you wanna set up to it, you can install your print drivers under here. As you can see, Ubuntu is real good with this. It picks up the printers on your network. I have a brother's printer as well as a HP desktop jet printer that's on my network currently and it already picked those up and added them to the actual desktop and then also this is something i was going to get to within the command line but i wanted to show you that you can do a lot of this stuff that i'm gonna do in the command line from the gui but as i stated the power of linux is within the command line but you can modify user accounts as well which is super cool to actually have access to from a gui now let's go down and close this and this will conclude the portion of the basic understanding of how to use a Linux desktop environment. Now a quick note, depending on what distribution you use, the desktop environment may look totally different from what I'm showing you here. But if you're following along with this course and you install Ubuntu, your desktop environment should look similar to what mine is showing here. But I just want to at least let you guys know that in the future, once you start playing around with other distributions, the desktop environment may look a little different. Certain things may, in different, may be in different places, but the overall concepts are pretty much the same. And that's why it's important for you guys to understand how to use the terminal because a lot of the tools and a lot of the software that you use within a terminal is used across all Linux distributions. So let's hop over to the next section.